think someone in here feels like God isn't there for him right now. I don't know who it is, but I just want you to know God is there for you. No matter how far you stray off your path, He's always going to be there. He loves you more than anything in the world. Amen. Well, you don't know it's time that you're just speaking prophetically. That's, that's good. Sorry. I said, should I say I think that was for me? Yes, that was good. Well, I wanted to preach something really phenomenal this morning because mm -hmm. I have all my old friends here and that way I can impress them. But you know, we have all heard the best <laughs> preachers and teachers over the last 40 years that are in existence. So I can't really wow anybody. So therefore, I will just tell you what's in my heart. The way I tell things, because I don't preach like other people. I preach like me. And I sometimes I don't even preach. I just teach or share or whatever. But, um, I don't know where this comes from. I guess the Holy Spirit just gave it to me. I'm just driving down the street. And he said, talk about the, uh, the H's of the backslider. I said, H's? Oh, well, you're going to have to tell me what they are first. <laughs> We're going to look at a little bit, a few of the H's. And I'm sure since it's uh, quarter till, I'll probably only get to one or two of the H's of the backslider. We'll have to finish this over the next few weeks. And I'll stick it up on YouTube. But uh, let's look at a couple of scriptures about uh, being backslidden or backslider. Do you know there are only two scriptures in the entire Bible with the word backslider or backsliding in it? We're going to look at those two scriptures. You think, gosh, there's sure a lot of people doing it for only two scriptures. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Proverbs 14, 14. The backslider in heart shall be filled with with his own ways. And a good man shall be satisfied from himself. First of all, uh, being backslidden is a thing of the heart. And the heart is where we backslide. On the outside, we might do, you and I might do some things that somebody might look at and think it wasn't that good. Or, you know, the, somebody might look at us and judge us for this or that or whatever. Somebody don't. Some people don't like some things that I like to watch on TV. And you know, that's really none of your business. You get your act together, and I'll work on my act. You get your speck out of your eye or beam out of your eye, and I'll, get, I'll try to work on mine. Every once in a while, if I if I got a humble enough heart, I'll come to you and say, Hey, brother, that, you're tripping quite a bit. Can I get that little speck out of your eye for you? And if you're humble when you come to somebody... <clears throat> How many of you knows if somebody comes to you and you know they love you, you know they love you, then you can help them and you can correct them. If you don't know that they love you, then anything that they say is worthless. Absolutely worthless. I don't really, you know, I'll listen to you because I'm just, just in case God's trying to talk through you and even if you've got a lot of pride, you know what I'm saying? I'll, I'll still try to hear you if I can. But uh, uh, we need to have a humble enough spirit about us uh, that uh, if we are to help somebody else, that we're going to do it with a humble heart. Are you listening to me? That's so important. You know, husbands, your wife can, can receive your uh, admonitions a whole lot better if you, as I said before, make a sandwich, you know. Love on top, love on the bottom, low correction in the middle. You know, wives, your husband can receive uh, correction a lot better with the love and the kindness and the honor and the respect with a, just a little bit of a admonition in the middle. But the backslider in heart shall be filled with his own way. This is a scripture we should claim for ourselves. 
Um, <laughs> filled with his own ways. I looked this up in the in the uh, in the Hebrew, and filled means to be satiated. You ever said, "Oh, no, I can't eat anymore. I'm just satiated." I, I, I use that word sometimes. Most people don't use the word satiated, but sometimes I do. You know, being a, a super intelligent as I am, I say satiated. <laughs> You know, or I'll say full as a tick, and that means the same thing. You done, went, and ate too much. And this is what happens when we get in a backslidden state. And I've looked back at different times in my life, and I was walking a different way, a different way that God wanted me to walk. I wasn't walking where I was supposed to be walking. And you know what? I just got sick of it. I'm so full, I'm sick. How many of us have said that? I'm just, oh, I'm just so full, I'm just sick. Just almost sick. Well, you know what? We need to get we need to get sick of being backslidden and away from where we're supposed to be in our relationship with God. We need to be sick of that. And God promises us. If you're a believer, if you're a child of God, if you're truly saved, you truly been born again, the Holy Spirit's really living in you, you are not going to enjoy sin. You're going to be sick of it. You're going to get sick of it. You're not going to like it. I remember being in places I shouldn't have been. I remember the Holy Spirit talking to me, and I thought, what are you doing here? <laughs> yeah, the Holy Spirit talking to you in an inappropriate place. Yeah. That's because he loves you, and he said, I'll never leave you forsake you. So he's, 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 he is ever pulling on our heartstrings. To pull us back to where we need to be with God. And uh, this is a wonderful, wonderful uh, thought here about our relationship with Him. That we really watch our hearts because it's all about the heart. Now, it's not so much about the outside stuff. The outside stuff just shows what's on the inside. And you know... Um, Either I'm a much worse sinner today than I was 30, 40 years ago, 35 years ago, or I am just so sensitive to what bothers God. Because I never used to repent nearly as much as I repent now. I repent all the time. I mean, I have to repent all the time. I'm always having to say, I'm sorry, Lord. Lord, help me. But it's usually an attitude thing. It's a heart thing. I wasn't loving. I didn't forgive. I was judgmental. I was condemning them. I was, you know, just those heart issues. You know, the heart issues is what takes us and drives us away from the Lord. You let that bitterness build up in there, don't you? Man, you just shot yourself in the foot. We can't, you can't let bitterness stay in there because that attitude of the heart will, will take us the wrong direction. Jeremiah 20, uh, 2 19 says, Thine own wickedness shall correct thee. Isn't that the truth? You know what? I, most of the time, we really don't need somebody to correct us. Most of the time. Every once in a while, we do need somebody. <laughs> but most of the time, we don't. Our own wickedness does it. And thy backsliding shall re Reprove thee. I want us to look at the definition of backslider. The first scripture there about the backslider is the Hebrew word suak, and it really, it literally means to retreat. You know, we're right in the middle. I'm fighting for the Lord. Remember that song we used to sing? Of, uh, Oh, don't let a wounded soldier die. You know, he was on the front back line in the battle for the Lord. And Satan crept in to kill his light. That's what he does to us sometimes. He beats us down. And then we, we want to retreat. This is what we're not supposed to do, people. It's okay to sit down and rest. It's necessary to sit down by the water that Patty was talking about. By the flowing streams of the water of life and just to drink in the the water of the Lord. It's okay to sit down. It is not okay to go backwards. Don't go backwards. Don't let yourself go backwards in your relationship with Jesus. Don't let your... You know, years and years ago, I had had some people let me down. 
How many of us have ever had somebody really let you down? You just you're disappointed in them, and you're you're just hurt, and you've been in church situations maybe where you were hurting too, and, and and you know what? And you know I think that Jimmy Swerve and different people that just and I was disappointed with different things, but I got to thinking, you know, my eyes aren't supposed to be on them anyway. And all of us were in a group years ago, and there was a lot of good things about the group, and then there was a few things about the group that were really imbalanced and kind of a little. Uh, shady in some ways. And uh, a lot of people got hurt during that movement and just left the Lord. And I thought, hmm, because I never even tempted to leave the Lord. What were their roots and foundation in? And your roots and your foundation have to be so deep in Jesus and in your personal relationship with Him that it does not matter what anybody else does. It just does not matter what they do. It, you know, we've got to have him. He, listen, I didn't die on the cross for you. But he did. And he is perfect love. Like, like Sue said. He is perfect love. I'm working on it. You're working on it. But we're not there yet. So, we're all growing up. Backslidings. Uh, it, that's another Hebrew word. Mashuba, And it means turning away. You know, to turn away, you have to make a choice. Uh, repentance means to turn, right? And go the right direction. To change your mind. And, and, and another translation means... We have to repent of our repentance when we backslide. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? we got to repent of our repentance. And uh, we've got to turn the wrong way and make a choice to go the wrong way. And, you know, I don't want to break the Lord's heart. Because how many of you have been, are married, have been married a while? Anybody been married more than 15 years? I've been married, Nancy, I've been married 31 years now. We live in the same house. And there has been time we lived in the same house, but we weren't in good fellowship. <laughs> There's been times that we were in the same house, and we didn't say much to each other. There are times we uh, were in the same house, and what we did say to each other wasn't that good. <laughs> are you listening to me? But let me tell you something. <laughs> there's, a, there's a scripture somewhere that says God's married to the backslide. God is faithful to you. And he sticks with you. And you, you might have a relationship with the Lord, but God really wants your fellowship. I mean, I'm glad Nancy and I are, are married and we got that piece of paper. That piece of paper is really nice. I don't know where it's in a file somewhere. I do not know where the file is. I think I know where the file is. That piece of paper is wonderful for legal contracts. But you know what? I like it when she and I hold hands. And I like it when she she kisses me. Okay. That's good enough. <laughs> yeah, I like it. When we just sit and talk. And I like it when we just sit and eat a meal together. Or just drink a cup of coffee and just play in Scrabble and just talk and fellowship. And you know what? God is glad that you're saved. He's glad that you accepted the terms of the covenant. And I'm glad you're saved. Those of you that are. But you know what God wants? He wants to love you. He <coughs> wants to have that fellowship with you. He wants an intimate relationship with you. He doesn't want just the contract. He wants the fellowship. So I want to encourage you today. Get in fellowship 
with Jesus. It's great that you came to church, but you know what? The rest of the week, you get up in the morning, crack your Bible for just one verse or two, and just start loving Jesus. Tell him how much you love him. Just fellowship with him. Walk with him. Talk with him. Oh, what a sweet Savior we have. Let's not ignore him. We're in the same house with him. We're of the household of faith, aren't we? We've got the contract, don't we? Let's get the fellowship going. If you're here in the back seat, I don't know. There's just been a lot of things said this morning about that from different ones. Let's get in a closer fellowship with the Lord. And my first point I might be able to try to get to in the next four minutes is uh, one of the H's of the backslider. And that's the hounds of heaven. Now, I, don't, I, I want you to know right now, I, I want you to know I've never read a book. Sorry, I don't like to read. Apologize. I, 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 never, I, I mean, I have read some books, but I've never read a book about the hounds of heaven. Never heard a sermon about the hounds of heaven. I don't know what the hounds of heaven are. This just came to my heart, and I'm just telling you what came to my heart. So if this is not wrong, uh, if this is not right, I'm sorry. Uh, if there's something, uh, I know there's a book about it somewhere, but Patty Shakespeare, she must have read it. I haven't read it. I don't know. Anyway, there's two hounds from heaven. These are a couple blood hounds here. And these hounds from heaven are chasing you. And uh, there's all the, I wanted to give you all these other things, you know, like a hellfire from, from Sodom and Gomorrah and the hook in the jaw for, and the hornets, because these are all H's, right? The hornets in the hole that you fall into and all the other H's, which, well, I thought we got some of those later, but, but for different reasons. Uh, but there's some uh, some other H's that I really want you to see. This first one, I just want you to see this one. And it is the two hounds from heaven. Goodness and mercy. Psalms 23, verse 6 says, Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days. All the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. God is following you. And he has sent goodness and mercy to follow you. And when you don't think that you're worthy... He reaches up and gives you a hug. <laughs> I think of the prodigal's, prodigal son when he came home after being in the pig pen. See, if you wanted to stick with the H's, it'd be hog pen. <laughs> hog pen. But when he came home from the hog pen, God gave him a hug. I like the Amplified, or the Message Bible says, he gave him a hug. And smothered him with kisses. That's what it says. You know what in Hebrew culture you were supposed to do with the backslid person that did what that boy did? Squandered his inheritance? Well, we, we heard a little bit about it last week. There's a ceremony that you're supposed to have and treat him as dead. Well, the father broke all the rules. The father said, First of all, in Hebrew culture, you didn't run with a rope. He ran. He took the humiliation off of his son by running to him. What kind of love is that? Then he hugs him and kisses him. Didn't offer one word of correction. Why didn't he? Because his transgressions already corrected him. His his wrong ways already corrected, and we saw that in the scripture a minute ago, didn't we? He didn't need no correction. He already knew. He and I don't need somebody to blast us. We already know, don't we? He hugged him. He kissed him. 
He gave him his ring, put his robe on him. All of these are covenant, covenant exchanges. And God loved us so much. And if you've been, like this young lady come up, she says, I've been backslidden, I want to come back to the Lord today. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. <laughs> Makes me want to dance that thing where they churn it. <laughs> I don't know how to do that. I'm too fat. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, what, you know what kind of a harsh word God has for you? I'm going to hug you. I'm going to kiss you. I'm going to take all the attention off of anything wrong you ever did and put it on me. And I'm going to give you my ring so you can use my name. Oh, hallelujah. What a father. <laughs> what a heavenly father we have. The Darby version says, Surely goodness and loving kindness shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of Jehovah for the length of my days. Yes, it says, Your beauty and love chase after me. Woo, I like that. Your beauty and love chase after me every day of my life. I'm back home in the house of God for the rest of my life. Now, Romans 2.4 kind of sums up this whole thought. It says, Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and longsuffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. There's a few people that need to know they're going to hell. There's a few people you need to just go up to and say, you're going to hell. A few people that need that. Wasn't too long ago, one of our members of our church, their dad had raised them as a, a nudist, and, and he was a, an agnostic, and he was dying in a he was dying in a hospital. And, and I made an exception. I went up to him and I said, Mr. Melvin, you're dying. You could die any minute. And you're going to hell. Would you like me to give you the plan of salvation? You've been an atheist. I said, if you do, squeeze my hand real tight. Because he couldn't talk. He squeezed my hand real tight. And I led the man in the, through the plan of salvation and prayed with him to repent of his life long attitude of rebellion against God. That man had tears in his eyes when he accepted the love that Jesus had for him came into his heart. Isn't that awesome? You know, God, that doesn't sound fair, does it? I'll live my whole life for God. I'll live my whole life for God and he just gets to go to heaven. Ever living like hell all his life. Listen. He lived like hell, and he lived in hell all his life, too. Yes, when you serve God, I'm sorry, this is fun. This is peace. This is joy. You know, and look what he missed out on his whole life. He missed out on the fellowship that we've had with him. He gets to heaven for eternity. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. But still, you know, get the mercy of God awesome. Remember when uh, Jesus talks about the, the master who... Uh, who uh, has the servants and some come at the very beginning of the day and he pays them a wage. I don't, we'll just say it was 10 denarii. I don't know what it was. And then some others come at noon and they work the rest of the day. And some come at 3. And then some come at the very last hour. We'll say it was 4. I don't remember what the time it was. 4 to 5 we'll say. They only work one hour when they all come to settle accounts. Guess how much they each one got? The same amount. That don't sound fair, does it? It's not very Republican. <laughs> but 
But you know what? <laughs> God's mercy is so big, isn't it? It brings tears to my eyes. I can't talk about the mercy of God very long. I'm going to get to crying, see? Because I know my own heart. And I know how much I've needed His mercy. And it is truly His goodness that has brought me to repentance. It was never anything else. It was never somebody saying, you're so bad, you're going to go to hell. Don't you know backsliders go to hell? That wouldn't faze me. But you start talking about how much God loves me. Now you're bringing tears to my eyes. You mean he loves me anyway? Yeah. I think of my own kids. Does anybody have kids here? Yeah. Then you know what the love of God is like. To a very small degree. Because you would never turn your back on your own child no matter what they did. Now you would let them have some consequences, obviously. Oh, I'll let them have all the consequences they want. I might even add a few extra consequences on them. But my love is steady, steady, steady. And that's what God's love is for you. Hallelujah. So the hounds of heaven are after us. God's goodness. And God's mercy. Let's stand this morning. We've already had church. We are the church. But we've already had a good worship service this morning. And we've had lots of wonderful music. And we've already had people come in off the street to give their life to the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. And we've had healings and testimonies. We've had everything we need to have. So we're just going to go home. And y'all think about the message. And just think about where your heart is in relationship to fellowship with him. And we'll go over the rest of these ages uh, on the next few weeks. Probably take me a couple, three weeks to get through. Amen. Let's, let's just bow your heads. So let's have a closing prayer. Joe, lead us in a prayer. you got to do something. Come up here, brother, and lead us in a prayer. Come on up here and lead us in prayer. Put a blessing on my congregation, will you? Put one of them Hebrew blessings on my chin. I have to put this on my chin. I have to put this on my hair like you. It's good to be in God's house. It's good to hear his word. Father, we thank you this morning for your word. We thank you for your kindness. If it wasn't for your kindness, Lord, all of us would be lost, desperate, without hope. But with hope, Lord, we think of a bright vision of the future that you have for us. I thank you, Lord, for the congregation here, for the brothers and sisters that are struggling sometimes, Lord, to serve you, to be faithful, to be honorable in all that they do. May you enable them, Lord. May you help them. May you bless them, watch over them, protect them, and guide them. May they come into understanding the blessings of Abraham. Yes. May they understand the blessings that go along with obedience, Lord. Yes. That when they go in and go out, they have you. They have peace. And they have an abundance. They will not be debtors. But they will lend to many nations. May you watch over them, Lord. May your face shine upon them. May you bless our goings and comings in Christ's name. Amen. 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 I'll give another hand to our visitors. My old